Toward the end of the Old Testament, there's all these little prophetic books, prophets, and they're just little tiny books, a few chapters, and they end our Old Testament. And one of those prophets' name is Habakkuk. And I'm going to read a little bit from uh, just his words or his writings that we have, uh, starting with verse 1, I'm a, I mean, chapter 1, I'm going to skip around just a little bit, but it might uh, help us understand what he's trying to do. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help? And you will not listen. Or cry to you violence? And you will not save. Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention rise. So the law becomes slack, justice never prevails. Wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, and it will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous live by their faith. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Right at the beginning, Habakkuk's uh, letter writing here that we get, uh, it's only a couple chapters long. It's literally three chapters. It's like three pages in your scripture. But it's just uh, one of those prophetic books we call the Minor Prophets. And right in the beginning, Habakkuk is doing what I hear people do all the time, and I catch myself doing sometimes too. It's the language that we use like, what has become of this world? What, if, what, what are people thinking? How can we be like this? And most of the time when we say that, we're looking at someone else and they're doing something, and we don't like it. And we think, what is this world coming to? This is the phrase that we use. This is exactly what Habakkuk is doing. He's looking out. He's saying, Lord, I cry out to you. I complain about these people. And you do nothing about it. You don't listen. Uh, I, I don't know what to do. And, and really, Habakkuk is kind of complaining about Israel and, and the whole exile stuff and Judah and, and how they have been taken over. And um, he's just looking at issues of justice of the law, and he's saying, what in the world is going on here? Now, this was written a long time ago, but you can see we haven't changed much. We're still saying what Habakkuk says right here in the beginning. He says that uh, what is happening, what, what is going on, there's wicked, he said, the wicked surround the righteous, and the law becomes slack, and, and justice never prevails. He's basically saying, what in the world is wrong with this world? And then he says he's just going to wait. He says he's going to wait and to see what God does. This is great because uh, we're still on some level waiting. We're still in this kind of between times. In fact, in the Lord's Prayer, we say it, we say it every week here at, at First Church. We say, you know, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's us asking God, look, we want you to do something down here like you do in heaven. And we pray it over and over and over and we wait for God over and over. And it's almost like we sit between, we know that we, you know, we, we think that God will do something and it will be good off in the, off in the future or whatever. And yet 
we sit here and go, but right now everything is not doing well, right? Like, what is this world coming to? And oftentimes I think when we say those words, what we really mean, which I think is, is troubling, is when is God going to come and kick out all the people we don't like or that are thinking differently or on that side of the political, the political spectrum or whatever you want to call it? And when is God going to come back and prove to everybody that I've been right all along? Right? I'm, I'm the one who kind of knows. And so Habakkuk is saying something kind of like that. And he says, I'm just going to watch. I'm going to watch and see what happens. And then sure enough, it says that, that the Lord answers him. And all the Lord says is, I want you to write down this vision. I want you to write it down. Write down the way you feel, the way you are, are, are asking these questions, the way you are waiting. And don't worry. Things are happening and things will happen. And then he says, at the very end, look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. And the righteous, they live by their faith. And most of the time when we come to that, we go, look, we're the righteous. The other people are the proud. But I think something's going on here with God in the sense that God is recognizing, yeah, that the world is not working right. It's not working right. Habakkuk, you're right. It's not working. And yet, God is saying, there are still things in the world that are working, that God is sort of working towards the good. So I think that when we, when we get to a point where we as Christians sit here and we wait and we watch politics and we watch, we watch all this stuff and, and, and we see that things aren't right and we're like, well, God, what are you doing? Why aren't you fixing all of this? Part of our faith or part of what it means to be Christian is to wait, is to kind of tarry, is to, as Habakkuk says, he's, uh, he's at his watch post, right? Like he's a watcher person. And so he is not just uh, complaining about stuff, but he's watching to see what God will do. And he places himself in a position where he begins to see the good in the world. In fact, I think that what Habakkuk may be waiting for, or at least I think what we should be waiting for, is not that God will come with fire and brimstone and fix, you know, fix things by getting rid of the people we don't like, but that's usually not the way God comes. God usually comes with forgiveness and with goodness. So what if we're not waiting for destruction or we're not waiting for God to fix things by getting rid of people. But rather, we're waiting for God to continue God's work of making the world work right, work good. Because if you remember, at the very beginning, that's what God does. He creates, God creates the world, and he calls every single piece of it good. And I think the faith that Habakkuk may be saying and trying to talk to the people about is a faith that looks forward to that good and sees that good, glimpses of that good here and there as it was originally in Genesis when God created. So maybe instead of us looking around the world and going, what is going on? Well, I mean, certainly, certainly we could ask that. But instead of it going, you know, what is the world coming to? What I think the world is coming to is ultimately God is going to work for the good of all of creation. That's what the world's coming to. So for me, I do not want the perspective of everything is going, uh, the phrase might be, to hell in a handbasket. But I don't think that's where we're headed. I actually think that God is working toward the good to transform. So even the people that drive us the most crazy, God is seeking to heal their brokenness, seeking to forgive and be merciful to even the people that we do not understand. Because in that, we all are made good. Not just a set group, but we're all made good. And I think that what we are watching for and what we are waiting for, at least from this prophetic, 
is that God is doing something good for all of creation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.